Yeah. So when you're doing high level, high volume, you know, you kind of need to meet every day just to touch base and talk about critical issues and things like that. So I like that first thing in the morning. Um, end of the day, you want to set yourself up for success for the next day. So everything by the end of the day should be teed up for the next morning. So if you've got any critical items, you meet in the morning, you get those critical items taken care of, and then you're off and running and it's motivational and things like that. You know, KPI meetings are weekly. Uh, whatever day of the week doesn't really matter. It could be a Monday, it could be a Friday, you know, it could be a Wednesday. A lot of times I like to end them, you know, in, in the week strong, go over the KPIs for the week, you know, so that you could come in Monday and you're, you're charged and you're ready to go. If you're in a critical situation in your business, Friday, Monday are good days to do weekly meetings. You know, do them twice a week if you need to, one on a Friday, one, you know, Monday, one on a Friday. So you can start, start strong, finish strong, you know, measure it, you know, <clears throat> do that kind of stuff. And then everybody in their departments has to put their numbers up. They have to show what their, you know, here's my goals, here's what I achieved, here's my outcome, so that everybody in the organization is seeing how everybody else is intertwined and what everybody else is doing, right? Because in an organization as it grows, a lot of people think they're the only ones doing anything. They're, they're the only ones working hard, they're the only ones doing whatever. So if everybody's kind of putting up their challenges, putting up their metrics, and putting up, you know, their volume, then everybody in the organization can see how busy everybody is, how important everything is. And if you got somebody who's not pulling their weight, they can't hide that they got to put their numbers up, right? And they got to present their KPIs. So in each department, the KPIs you're looking at from a marketing standpoint, whoever's in charge of that, the lead, you know, creating the leads, they got to be, you know, tracking what they're sending, uh, the areas they're sending, the list they're sending to, you know, and those results, right? So those are your basic KPIs on your marketing. You're going to be tracking all your marketing metrics, including uh, if you're doing any kind of Google AdWords or anything like that, you want to be talking to those people and finding out what keywords they're using, what, you know, long tail keywords are using, what phrases they're using, and, mm -hmm. and matching that to the leads that are coming in. Certain areas will generate certain seller leads over others. Are you getting more retail leads? Are you getting motivated seller leads? If not, you got to tweak that, track that. That works in some areas, doesn't work in other areas. So you really got to dial in your marketing. So there's all your KPIs for marketing. You know, from a, a lead management standpoint, where are those leads going? Who's getting them? You know, what do their deal metrics look like, right? So how many leads are turning into how many appointments that are turning into how many closes? And at the end of the day, I'm looking at dollars in profit uh, over everything else. So I'm not so interested in uh, necessarily numbers in terms of, you know, de you know, lead flow, lead volume, things like that. I'm interested in how many deals are we creating and then work it backwards from there so that you can make sure that everything is dialed in appropriately. So you got to track leads to deals to closings and what does that equal? So if your average wholesale fee is $10,000, you got to make sure that you're spending an appropriate amount to bring that in, right? And you always got to track that expense down to that end transaction. It really doesn't matter cost per lead, cost per click. You know, that stuff doesn't really matter. What is your cost per deal? That's really what you got to drill down on. Those other metrics are great to keep an eye on, but at the end of the day, what is your cost per deal? That's what you really need to be tracking. That's the biggest number in the business. If you're mm -hmm. spending twenty five hundred dollars in your wholesales or five grand, that's that's not making a lot of sense. If you're spending twenty five hundred bucks and they're ten grand, that makes a lot more sense. And if you're getting five or four or seven, and you're getting ten and fifteen and twenty, you want to know where they're coming from, what area, what kind of house, what kind of seller, so that you can double down on that and track that. And that's really what your KPIs are all about. So uh, so lead management what kind of leads are coming in, how quickly are they getting responded to, how quickly are appointments getting set or offers being sent out. You know, from the time that lead hits the lead, you know, the, the acquisition person, how quickly is an offer being sent out? So that's a good metric to track. If you're hmm. wholesaling virtually, that should be instant, right? So you want to like track that. that, make sure that you're on track with that. Um, after the offer's been sent out, how much time lapses between the offer being sent and a contract, right? So you want to track that. From the time the contract is signed, what's the time lapse between that and your cash, you know, closing and your fee coming in? And, uh, you know, once you've established rapport with your, you know, cash buyers, you can really reduce that time frame and working with your title companies and all that. But from a time frame, those are your big ones. Lead to, to you know, appointment set or contract, appointment set to contract, contract to end buyer, end buyer to closing. So those are time frames you want to track and you want to try to compress those as much as possible so that you have a very efficient organization and operation. A lot of people forget about those KPIs. Those are really important. You know, it shows you the efficiency of your organization and it helps you really 
accurately measure what is one person really capable of, you mm -hmm. know, when you look at these time frames. Um, so uh, I think that's a, I think that's about it. Um, I don't think I missed anything there. No, that's good. That's a good breakdown. I like that. I like that KPI too of incoming lead until the time that they get a, an offer proposal. Yeah. Yeah. How quickly yeah. were they contracted or contacted? So lead comes in, how quickly were they contacted? Was it answered immediately? Did somebody call them back? How much time lapsed? And then how much time lapsed between that conversation and a contract? And if you're virtually wholesaling, it should be instant. You and I can mm -hmm. talk on the phone for 10 minutes to 30 minutes and you got to control that lead that, mm -hmm. that seller, right? Don't let them, you know, you know, some people like to talk, um, you know, you should be able to within the 10 to 30 minute conversation, have enough information to send a contract out um, and get that done contingent upon your investor buyer viewing the property. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are the things you want to track and, and it really keeps your organization running.